Hello, this is about character and cloth. So let's start with Windows, General Editors and the Content Browser. That's a brilliant way to start with uh, when you want to do complex things. In previous tutorials I often use or more, more, uh, more or less use the character of bees here. I li quite like him. Let's pick a woman this time. Double click sh so she lands in the scene. Now we go to animation because we need an animation for her. She currently doesn't have an animation. She's just a skin. And uh, here I have uh, several kinds of uh, walks, for example. I double, double click it without uh, actually putting much focus on it. And you see a man walking and he doesn't see her. They don't see each other. He just walks sort of through her. And that's the walk he does. I want to use his walk on her. This person now has, and you can find it under rigging, a character. It is is a character, so to say. Uh, here under skeleton, you find human IK, and here he is. He's a character. He's defined as a character, a motion capture example, and that's uh, basically him. Uh, we want to use this thing for her. So she currently is not a character. So let's pick her, go to skeleton and quick rig her. She needs bones and joints. And we click on auto rig and we'll pretty immediately get a working skeleton inside her. Now we can close this window. She's the character, quick rig character, because we quick rigged her. I could uh, change the name to woman now, for example, woman character, whatever. And the current source is the control rig inside her, which of course is not animated. We could animate it by hand now, but I want to use his animation on her. So I go to source and the pull down menu offers me none. The stance, which is the basic starting position of uh, standard 3D characters. And what I will use now is the motion capture example. So she immediately jumps sort of to him and they perform the same thing. She's a little bit smaller, so her steps are, are shorter. That's why uh, he overtakes her now. But basically it's the same simulation. So let's uh, hide him now. We, st I think we still need him, but uh, let's hide him now. He's the walk skin man and the walk reference. Control H, now he's hidden. And I don't want to see the skeleton inside her because I don't want to pick the skeleton w uh, without wanting it really. So I go to show and joints, so the joints are gone. Now she walks from left to right time for clothing. Okay, let's give her a polygon plane as something to clothe her. Let's move it to her and up to her neck because the cloth simulation is always a dynamic simulation with gravity always starts with falling, falling cloth. I'll press F and you get a closer look to her, at her, and I think we can rotate this a little bit like this. And this is what we're going to use to clothe her. Go to the attribute editor and the polygon plane. We need uh, not more space in this direction, but in this direction here. Not that long, probably. We can use the scaling tool as well, which is probably easier here. So it's just, I think it's long enough. We don't need it that wide. Maybe like this. In the top window, we can see it more symmetrically. So when we move it a little bit to the left, we want to see the skeleton here either. No joints, please. So that's quite okay. With this l little geometry here, we will get a very, very rigid cloth. Cloth is something which needs lots of polygons. And the more polygons you have, the 
longer the simulation takes. But let's give it a try. This is always risky because many polygons mean lots of simulation time. I can type in a higher number here, like 70. That's not a high resolution yet, but uh, it's okay for the beginning. We need to cut out the neck apart, which is quite easy. We do it here in the top window, uh, right mouse click, and we pick faces because that's the parts in the polygons we can delete. I think the neck is sort of here. And we can check this in the in this view here. Actually, we can remove from the selection the ones here. Okay, we can remove this one, and that one, and that one, and the one here. I think that's not fine because we need this part here as well. It's a little bit like tailoring. I think that's fine. So we delete those. And now we have a cutout here, and we need to make sure that none of the polygons intersect with the character, which they don't. Right mouse click, object mode, and now we convert this into cloth. We need to go to FX here, end cloth, create end cloth. So that's a cloth now. Um, what it does, it falls down and the cloth doesn't see and feel the character. So let's pick the character and go to end cloth and define the character as a passive collider. Now the cloth feels the character but the character walks away too fast. So already a very nice simulation but that's not what we want. We want the, the cloth to relax and then he or she begins to walk. So now we set the character still. So she's standing there in that pose and let give the cloth time to fall down and relax. How do we do this? We go back to the human IK and instead of the source walking example, the motion capturing example, we select none. We're at frame one now and the character does not move but our cloth does. So now this is the typical cloth simulation. It takes time and the more polygons you have the more time it takes. But it does a pretty good job already. currently at frame 133. If your material has too few polygons the simulation will go much faster but if you have even more polygons it will be even better. But it's uh, it's quite nice currently. The default cloth um, interacts which it, with each other and is slightly stretchy so we have few st strange things happening here now but basically it falls down properly and it's quite a nice cloth cloth really nice clothes so we need to wait and when we find a state where we say okay it's relaxed it's nice now that's that could be our starting position so for example no intersection with a hand sort of like this and we stop the simulation it's currently at frame 406 in my case and now there comes an important thing when we rerun the simulation now uh, it, the same thing will happen it will take time until it relaxes but we can pick the cloth and then go to field solvers and set the initial state 
to set it for the selected object. Meaning we don't want it to relax from all the way up to this state now, but we want to start with this position. So let's do this. Nothing really happens in the command line. I find no uh, errors whatsoever, so this is perfectly fine. And now when I jump back to the first frame, which I do using this icon here, nothing changes with the cloth. The cloth just sits there and when I run the simulation it starts from here. It relaxes even more and I think it takes ages until it's totally relaxed and even then some uh, cloth nodes, little points, will keep moving. So let's go back to the first frame and now we'll uh, actually apply the walk again, the motion capture example. So she's starting to walk. Now many things can happen and I don't know what will happen because it always depends on the resolution of the polygon cloth and the uh, lots and lots of uh, dynamic properties here. When you select, select cloth, you have the stretch resistance, the compression resistance, the bend resist resistance, the rigidity, the mass, the bend angle scale, the rest length scale, etc. And uh, here you have the presets where I get to in a second before we uh, close this tutorial. So let's run the animation. It's not real time because the cloth always needs time to ad adapt, but it will actually show us how it works. If you find this depressing, you will find similar effects when you try out this simulation. It depends very much on how fast she walks and it depends on how heavy the cloth is and uh, the gravity, for example. What happens if we uh, use one of the presets? For example, the chiffron behaves much differently. Now, when you get to the point where you like the simulation, you will then go to, in this case, it's uh, we're getting close to what we actually want here. Um, you go to NCache because you're going to cache the uh, animation now, the simulation, and uh, you're going to cache the N object. And once you've done that, uh, you can play back the simulation and uh, fast forward or rewind, uh, it will always be intact until you adjust parameters of the simulation. So um, if we do this, uh, Maya starts from frame zero 1 and goes further, does the whole process of simulation, but writes it into a disk cache, which you can use for further developments. So this is basically what I wanted to show you about character animation and n-cloth. And as you can see, it's a lot about trying things out. Enjoy.